Are you a House of the Dragon fan? Have you seen episode 4? Have you heard what Millie Alcock has to say about filming that scene with Matt Smith? Did she find it awkward or normal? Do you want to know the answers to these questions? Then ensure you watch this video till the end as we will be discussing Millie Alcock's state and her comment on that scene. First up, let's explore 7 details in House of the Dragon episode 4 you might have missed out on. Warning! Return now if you haven't seen House of the Dragon episode 4 since there are spoilers. Have you seen episode 4? of House of the Dragon? Do you think there are some details that you might have missed on? Well, don't go anywhere. Sit tight. And let's show you some of these details. The fourth episode of House of the Dragon demonstrates that it is an actual prequel to Game of Thrones. Though the Targaryen plot and court politics blend smoothly to produce a captivating narrative, few indications indicate Westeros' history. These Easter eggs are related to Game of Thrones and author George R. R. Martin's various works set in this realm. Here are some details from House of the Dragon episode 4 that you might might have missed. Did you miss out on the Sea Lord of Bravos? Damon adds that Corlys Velaryon has returned home after his triumph at the Stepstones. However, during the tiny council meeting, it is revealed that Corlys is discussing marrying his daughter to the Sea Lord of Bravos. The ruler of Bravos, one of the free cities, has the title of Sea Lord. Syria Forel, Arya Stark's fencing trainer, revealed that he had served as the Sea Lord of Bravos's first sword. In the later seasons of Game of Thrones, we saw Bravos and the massive Titan monument. However, we didn't see much of the Sea Lord. Viserys and the Small Council know the need to resolve the problem with Corlys to avoid more complication in Westeros's already split political environment. Did you see the White Worm Missaria or any of the Little Birds? This episode features the reappearance of Daemon's consort Missaria, who saves him from a brothel after a wild night. Missaria has a new function, allegedly after growing disillusioned with the life of a harlot after living with Daemon. She appears to be an informant for the Hand, Otto Hightower. This seems to be her transformation into the first mistress of Whisperers. That is effectively the same role as Lord Varys in A Game of Thrones. Varys ran a network of youngsters known as Little Birds. These informants were minors who were not suspected of being spies. According to this episode, the use of children began with Missaria. In the episode, a little kid in Missaria's care ends up in the courtyard. Otto Hightower cites a source who never let him down. This suggests that the young children, or Little Birds, acts as informants and messengers. Misery the White Worm was the name given to Missaria in the original book. She was instrumental in supporting Daemon during the Dragon Dance. She will likely have a similar role in the series, even though her plot alters just a little from the original text. In the novels, she had a stillbirth due to Viserys' exile. Have you seen the inscription on the dagger? Viserys gives Rhaenyra the Game of Thrones cat's paw dagger to remind her of her enormous responsibility. Aenor Targaryen formerly owned the dagger before being passed down to Aegon the Conqueror. The sword is inscribed with with Aegon's prophecy. It says, From my blood comes to the prince that was promised, and his will be the song of ice and fire, and is only exposed to severe heat. The prince that was promised is referenced in House of the Dragons for the first time. Of course, we all know how that ends up in the Game of Thrones and who the prince is. The House of the Dragon adds some background to the hypothesis. It may continue to do so in the future. You definitely need to thank me for telling you this. Up next, have you wondered about the significance of the moon tea? It is apparent that King Viserys doubts his daughter has remained chaste and a virgin. As a result, he sent the Grand Maester to her apartments with some special tea. The tea is called moon tea, and it acts as an abortifacient to prevent undesired pregnancies caused by Rhaenyra's sexual relations. Moon tea, also known as Tansy tea, is a medicinal herbal beverage used to avoid or terminate pregnancies in the Seven Kingdoms and beyond the wall. Moon tea is traditionally produced by maesters and wood witches using tansy, mint, wormwood, honey, and a drop of pennyroyal. Keep watching along closely, we're about to tell you everything you need to know about the foreshadowing that you might have missed out on in the episode, so don't go anywhere. So, what significance does the Mummer's play hold? The play watched by Rhaenyra and Daemon looks distinct from the Mummer's plays shown in Game of Thrones. In Game of Thrones, actors and actresses don't extensive makeup and costumes. However, it appears that Mummer's' play were performed slightly differently in the past. The clothing and makeup are limited, and men portray the women's roles, Rhaenyra and Alicent. Given that that this play emphasizes how the people favor a male king. The choice of players appear to mirror a specific time in Westeros' history. This is probably unimportant to the plot, but it is an intriguing element you could have missed in the House of the Dragon episode 4. Next, did you pick up on any foreshadowing? An ancient blind crone approaches Rhaenyra and Daemon in the streets of King's Landing and asks whether she wants to know her death. In Game of Thrones, Maggie the Frog, a woodland witch who lived near Casterly Rock, made a similar prediction to Cersei Lannister. 
here. Rhaenyra watches in amazement but does not respond. The following image depicts a wooden dragon's head spewing fire. We're going to discuss Rhaenyra's death as it appears in the novels. In the strictest sense, this scenario is not a prophecy. However, the original text might be a premonition of Rhaenyra's horrible demise. Finally, did you see Rhaenyra's romances? This episode ends Rhaenyra's love ties with Damon and Sir Criston Cole. Her romantic interactions with them are only mentioned and implied in the original text. Instead of skirting the issue, the episode makes it quite clear. Sir Criston, in the stories, fell completely in love with Rhaenyra and was devoted to a fault. He requested her hand in marriage, which Rhaenyra had to decline because she was engaged to Lanor of House Valerian. Viserys threatened to move Rhaenyra's claim if she did not marry Lanor. As a result, she rejected Sir Criston, causing significant friction and tension between them. Later, Rhaenyra marries Daemon, as the show's trailers and promotional material hinted at. That's all the information you could have missed in the House of the Dragon episode 4. What were your thoughts on this episode? Which number surprised you the most? Please let us know in the comment section. Finally, what does Millie Alcock think about shooting that House of the Dragon scene with Matt Smith? The star of House of the Dragon, Millie Alcock, has come out about filming a specific moment in the newest episode of the Game of Thrones prequel. Made by the House of the Dragon, many people are uneasy after seeing episode 4. Millie Alcock and Damon Targaryen, Matt Smith, venture into a brothel where the two succumb to the lure of lust. While incest is not a new concept in the Game of Thrones universe, it nonetheless makes many viewers uncomfortable. However, House of the Dragon wasn't as difficult to film as it appeared. Millie Alcock said, In this episode, Rhaenyra, Alcock, and her uncle Damon, Matt Smith, slip out of the Red Keep for a night of revelry in King's Landing. After several drinks, Damon leads Rhaenyra to a brothel where the two end up in a passionate embrace. Perhaps this is standard material for the incestuous Targaryens, but this is the first scene of this type to appear in the prequel. However, Alcock stated that filming was not difficult. No, oddly enough, we, Matt Smith and I, were simply friends, so that was quite comfy. She said to the New York Post, opens in a new tab, We worked with an intimacy coordinator throughout the rehearsal process and mapped it out months in advance. She continued saying, Claire Kilner, our director, made certain that we hadn't seen any of the brothel material before filming, so we're traveling into the brothel for the first time, and he's taking her through the room with all of these other bodies. That was extremely startling. This is kind of strange and ridiculous, you think. And here you have it. That is all you need to hear about episode 4 of the House of the Dragon and what Millie Alcock had to say about filming that House of the Dragon scene with Matt Smith. I hope you liked this video. Consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel if you did. Also, please enable notifications so you never miss out on any exciting news we share with our viewers. Finally, if you have any more related news about the topic we missed, let us know in the comment section. Thanks for watching!